interesting show where we talk about real life real estate situations, but we bring you real life real estate solutions. I'm your host, Glenn Glass, but affectionately known as Mr. Doll Out of a Dime. And my guest today is the Superman of IRAs himself, uh, Mr. Mike Ventry. Uh, Mike, Mike is going to tell us what we should be doing with our money during the pandi- pandemic and um, why, why we should be doing it and, and the best practices for doing what we should be doing with our retirement accounts anyway and why we should have one. So without further ado, uh, Mr. Mike Ventry, uh, tell the folks who you are and um, just some of, your, some, of, some of what you got going on and, um, and how you are suffering uh, during this pandemic or in your houseboat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thanks, Glenn, for having me on, and uh, I hope everybody's staying safe out there. Um, I am a na- native, you know, I grew up here in uh, the Georgia, you know, Atlanta area, and uh, I've been doing self-directed IRAs for several years now, and before that, I was doing mortgages for 15 plus years, so I've been in finance pretty much my most of my adult life. And um, these last couple months have been challenging, but a lot of doors have opened up for people. Um, I normally doing lunch and learns every couple of weeks, going to all the real estate meetings that I can, teaching three hour CE classes to uh, realtors in Georgia. And uh, you know, now with this whole coronavirus, everything's webinars and you know, mm. virtual type of thing. But, you know, it has really, you know, if you look at the positives, you know, for years I've been telling people that are at a current job with a current 401k, I'm sorry, but you, you probably are not going to be able to use that money. But with the new CARES Act from the coronavirus, you know, if you're affected by the virus, which a lot of people are, most people are, you mm-hmm. can now access that money, you know, to pay your bills or do real estate investing loan money you know obviously we're a vehicle for people to use that money within a retirement account so they don't have to pay capital gains taxes and uh, income taxes on those gains so it does uh, create a lot of new opportunity for people that uh, have really been uh, having to wait until they left their employer Mm, Good stuff. So I guess in some ways, for those of us who have, uh, we'll say, I'll use this description, an an abundance mindset. Um, Although there's, you know, havoc being wreaked all around us, we can find a silver lining in, you know, most of the stuff that we deal with, you know, on a a day-to-day basis. I mean, now dealing with a pandemic, it's a whole different situation. But even in the midst of that, there are some positives, like you said. Um, I know a lot of things that I've gotten done over the last six to eight weeks, I probably, probably wouldn't have gotten them done (laughs) until maybe two years from now. (laughs) So, um, but you know, just more, more relative to the ways of investing, like, you know, I've, I've actually worked with several people doing investing that have loaned money to me from their IRAs. So I want to give the people an idea of more specifically how kind of that process works, what that kind of looks like, and maybe even if people have not gotten an IRA, what's t- what's the kind of the uh, direction they should go to start setting it up to where they'd be able to you know take advantage of that. Sure, no, sure. Three or four questions in one. <laughs> yeah, well, no, no, that's actually perfect beginning to end where this will go. If you take it back to the bare basics, you look at your IRA or a 401k as your business partner. Mm. This person buys things, this person sells things, this person doesn't pay taxes. You tell this person what to do. If you ever take any money from your business partner, he or she is going to 1099 you and then you're going to pay taxes. Mm. So Mm. how it looks on a real estate transaction is your IRA is the buyer on the contract. Your IRA sends the earnest money. Your IRA pays the property taxes. Your IRA collects the rents or flipping income. Your IRA doesn't pay taxes. Mm. How it would look like on a loan is your IRA. A lot of people don't want to fool with getting a house under contract and 
tenant screening on rentals and appraisers and home inspections. They just want to loan money, which is mm -hmm. a popular mm -hmm. lunch and learn I do called being the bank, you know, using your IRA to loan money, which you've already, you know, you've said you've had that experience. And how that looks is the IRA is the lender. The IRA mm -hmm. normally will hold, and not always, but normally will hold first lien position on the, the property. Mm -hmm. The borrower pays the IRA. You know, the, the IRA owner creates a note with the borrower. They come to an agreement on the terms and, you know, what have you. And um, those mortgage payments coming into the IRA are tax-free. They build mm -hmm. up in the IRA's account. <clears throat> so... And for those people, you know, who may not have an IRA or a 401k right now that are starting from scratch, you know, the, those to me are the most fun to watch. You mm -hmm. know, these are normally younger people, not always. Sometimes they're in their 40s and 50s starting from scratch. And, you know, I started a Roth from scratch a couple years ago at 50 years old with my wife, mm -hmm. you know, just with an annual contribution. And I mean, what can you do with, you know, three or four thousand dollars? Well, you can do tax liens. Mm -hmm. which a twelve, fifteen hundred dollar tax lien could turn into a fifty thousand dollar house wow. with a tenant mm -hmm. paying your IRA five hundred dollars a month. And if it's a Roth IRA, that's free money. You never pay taxes on the wow. on the income. So you can see where you can turn a little bit of, you know, contributions into great living for yourself and for your retirement. A lot of people will do wholesaling mm -hmm. where their IRA will use a thousand dollars to get a house under contract. They know people like you and other people who buy properties who've mm -hmm. already told them what they'd get the house, buy the house for. And they sell that contract for $10,000 more, you know, five or six days later and they turn a thousand dollars into ten thousand dollars in a couple weeks wow. so you don't have to have this giant retirement account to get involved okay so tell us you know for, for those of us that may be oblivious to all of what you're talking about the iras and the 401ks and the the lmos and all these other things yeah. we have no idea what you're talking about so from an elementary perspective um, what is a 401k as it relates and, and how is that different from an IRA? That's a great question. And that, mm. and that's not ever asked. And a lot of people ask me after the hour is over, you right. know, what is an IRA? <laughs> so I'm glad you asked that. So an IRA is an individual retirement account, mm -hmm. a taxpayer that pays taxes on income. You have to have income. Social Security doesn't count. You have to have ordinary income that's subject to payroll taxes. Mm -hmm. And then you are allowed to make an annual contribution to your individual retirement account. That's an IRA. Okay. Um, you know, if you're 50, under 50 years old, $6,500 a year is the max you can put in. And if you're over 50, you can, you know, put in 7,000. Mm -hmm. um, actually, it's 6,000 and then seven. Uh, you know, 7,000 if you're 50 years old. A 401k is an employer plan. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's also known as a solo K for people who are self-employed mm -hmm. and they don't have any employees, just the spouse and a business partner is allowed mm -hmm. or a regular 401k does allow for full-time employees. You know, that's where you're allowed to take some of your salary called your salary deferral and put it in your plan and not pay taxes on. And then your company, if you're self-employed, can match you 25% of what you're putting in there. I don't want to get into the weeds, but you can put in a significantly bigger amount of a contribution than you can an IRA with the 401k. Got it, got it. So it would be, so if, if, as a solopreneur, um, what, let's, let's, go, let's go this direction. So as an employee, can I invest with my 401k like I can with my IRA? Or no? If it's a self-directed 401k mm. and you've opened up a self-directed 401k, yes, you would be able to invest in alternative assets. Mm. If you're an employee at, say, IBM or Walmart or, you know, a medium-sized mm. company and you're on your employer's plan, mm. you're going to be limited to a list of publicly traded stocks, bonds, and mutual funds that they're already pre-picked out by your employer that you can invest in. Mm, okay. But the self-directed 401k or solo k is a different animal. 
those are vehicles that you would get into real estate, you know, gold, loaning money, mm -hmm. private stock, you know, that sort yeah. of thing. Okay. So, so even Disney was a private company and a lot of, you know, people invested, you know, in Disney as a private stock mm -hmm. and um, IBM, same thing. Mm, okay. So I show up, you know, to my employer and I say, um, I want to take the money that I have in my 401k, including the money that you've contributed, and I want to invest in real estate with it. Is that a conversation that I would have with my employer? Or would I speak to someone like yourself that would help me in directing how I would do that? Well, first you would talk to your plan provider at your employer. Mm -hmm. And up until the coronavirus, you know, while you still were employed, the answer from your employer was going to be no, you cannot touch your 401k funds while you're still employed by the company. Mm -hmm. Some plans will allow you to take some after you're 59 and a half years old. Mm -hmm. There's always been hardship of uh, distributions you could take. There's been plan participant loans where you can take some money out and pay your plan back over a five year period. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as taking money out and you know rolling it into an IRA and that sort of thing or using it uh, without doing one of those hardship uh, distributions or plan participant loans been off limits. Mm -hmm. Now that the coronavirus has come around, if you're affected, you can go to your employer and say, I need a distribution, mm -hmm. you know, and one of the nice things about the CARES Act is it does give you three years to put the money back or mm -hmm. three years to pay the taxes. Uh, so yeah. that opens up a whole nother avenue for people trying to do, you know, real estate transactions and then pay their 401ks back really fast or within mm -hmm. a couple of years or <laughs> putting it in an IRA you know, or doing a Roth conversion. There's mm -hmm. just so many opportunities now if you're affected. But yeah. if you're not affected and you don't look at this coronavirus, you know, if you're employed right now, you're likely not going to be able to access those funds unless you do a plan participant loan with your company. Got it. So again, I'm, I'm you know, speaking from a purely elementary perspective. What is the benefit of having um, a Roth IRA or a self-directed IRA? What is the difference in those two and what will be the, the, you know, the benefits of having either, either or the other? Well, a Roth IRA can be a self-directed IRA, but basically the term Roth means it's mm -hmm. after tax money. Mm -hmm. Means you didn't get any discount at the end of the year when you did your taxes, but for all time, the gains that that Roth IRA makes are tax-free. Mm, okay. Um, okay. Self-directed, the term just means in our universe, you know, it means alternative assets, really. Mm -hmm. There's no difference from one IRA to the next. It's what your custodian will allow your IRA to hold. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, it's been stocks, bonds, mutual funds, you know, your Fidelity, your Schwab's, your Merrill Lynch's. Mm -hmm. And then comes along all these ads on TV. You see the last 10 years, put gold in your IRA, put precious mm -hmm. metals in your IRA. And then people found out, wow, I can put one, two, three Main Street in my IRA, or I can put a loan <laughs> in my IRA. And it's all been in the tax code since 1975. Wow. I attribute all those gold commercials to letting the, the word out because obviously your Merrill Lynch's and your Fidelities don't want you to self-direct because they mm -hmm. lose money when you do your own thing. Right. That's what I was say. So, <laughs> yeah, so they've been keeping the secret pretty good for 30 years. The last 10 years, though, the cat's out of the bag. There's already been, I think, three, four trillion dollars self-directed in retirement accounts, which is only like uh, two or three percent of the total piece. So it's, it's getting bigger. OK, so just again, for clarity's sakes, if I'm an employee, I'm working a job, I have a 401k, the company's contributing to it. I'm contributing to it. At any time, is there any time I can move that money into an IRA, a self-directed IRA? It's called a partial in-service rollover. You want to take part of the money in service while you're still working there and roll it into an IRA. And the answer to that is normally going to be no, unless there are certain IRS triggers. One is you have to be 59 and a half years old. Mm -hmm. which doesn't mean just because you are 59 and a half years old that you can. 
it's going to be in what's called your plan document right at the beginning terms of withdrawal but 95 out of 100 times it's going to be no you cannot touch the money while you're still there mm -hmm. uh, there are occasions where you may have put money in your 401k at your current job from a previous company you 401k a mm -hmm. lot of times they'll let you take that money out okay. but if people were allowed to willy-nilly take money out of their 401ks you know while they're employed <laughs> and their employers contributions at the same time it would crash the plan mm -hmm. which is why there's rules and place. But if you have an old 401k from a previous employer, those are perfect candidates to come talk to someone like me mm -hmm. and open up a traditional IRA and those funds would roll directly into your traditional IRA and there's no tax event that's happened. And now you have control of your 401k funds in your new self-directed traditional IRA and your investments you make are non-taxable. Got it. Okay. Okay. So, and, and, um, but, and you made a comment and, I, and I'm thinking, I'm going to make sure people are catching this. You made a comment that ordinarily that they wouldn't be able to roll those 401k plans over into an IRA, but as a result now you're saying that is possible to do that. Yeah. I mean, technically affected by the coronavirus, it's not just COVID-19, it's COVID-2, which is SARS, which mm. I was surprised that's part of the CARES wow. Act too. So SARS is still around. Both came from the same country. Mm -hmm. We know who that is. Um, that's another webinar. Um, <laughs> you know, so you're affected, which means you tested positive for one of those two or an immediate oh, okay. dependent in your family were hospitalized or tested positive for those two. Uh, you've lost work from, uh, if you're self-employed, loss of business. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not self-employed and you weren't able to work because of loss of childcare, that's in there too. All your obvious things of being affected. Mm -hmm. And if, if you are affected, you know, there, these doors have opened up for you where, yeah, now you can take a distribution of up to a hundred thousand dollars of your current 401k plan mm -hmm. and uh, not have to figure out what you're going to do with it for three years. Wow. You know, the IRS is giving, normally it was called it uh, an indirect rollover. You may have mm -hmm. heard of it. People took money out of their IRA or their 401k and the government gives you 60 days to put it back in like it mm -hmm. never even happened. Mm -hmm. and right. You could do that one time a year. Well, now that indirect rollover went from 60 days to three years. Wow. Wow. And you can do it multiple times as long as you don't go over a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars and you can either put it back within the three years with no tax event, or you can pay the taxes in three years or you can split up the taxes over three years. Because a lot of people are gonna have, you know, big losses on their tax returns at the end of this year because of not working, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. self-employed people. So right. they would be getting these giant refunds mm -hmm. where now's a good time for those people to do a, a Roth conversion or, and then instead of getting those giant refunds, that would wash out the taxes they would have to pay for taking this money out of their retirement accounts. So, so it's kind of a perfect storm for people. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the way you're explaining it, it's great, great, great stuff. I mean, this is kind of the, the alarm that people need to be paying attention to because there are some people that are probably losing their jobs that are just pulling out their 401ks and not taking any advantage of, you know, the tax advantages and different things like that, you know, so, um, you know, this is great information to be sharing. They can even, if they don't want to do that, they can go to their employer and do a plan participant loan. Mm -hmm. And the, the, in the past, you could borrow half of what was in there up to $50,000. So if you had a hundred grand in there, you could borrow up to $50,000. Now it's dollar for dollar. So you can borrow everything you have in there up to $100,000 and they give you an extra year to pay it back and you don't even have to start making your payments until you get back to full force on your income from your employer. So these payments may not even start, you know, for a quarter, three or four months. Why, why? So there's a lot of different things. Uh, I'd advise people just to Google CARES Act and uh, see if 
they see something relevant or they can contact me and I can give them the basics. I spent a couple hundred hours trying to get up to speed on it. Yeah. It is, you know, hundreds of pages long and I read every single word 10 times. So wow. Um, wow. there's a lot of loopholes in there, obviously that some people will take advantage of, but for the most part, it does, you know, open up a lot of doors for people that, you know, really couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. Great stuff. So why aren't more people, why aren't you like blasting this stuff? Why don't you have a billboard somewhere telling people about this information? Well, I am right now. I'm with you talking to the masses online and I right. do that as many times a day and a week as I can. And, you know, uh, you, you know, it just depends on what channel you watch on TV, you know, the sky right. is falling or things are looking good, you know, yes. <laughs> so if you just look for the good and what's been happening with all of this, there are some really exciting things for people and a lot of people are taking advantage of it like they should. Great. You know? Great. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. And, you know, again, I thank you for sharing. I think we had some questions. Um, that had come up. I want to make sure I get to the people who are, if, uh, okay, Facebook won't let me pull them up right now. But anyhow, so now I'm, I'm, you know, and, and these are again, of course, you know, questions that I want to make sure people that are watching can, can be clear on. Um, because these are things that a lot of us don't know. Like, of course, I'm not an IRA, you know, um, administrator, so I wouldn't have any clue about, you know, some of the things, I mean, because I work with people, doing loans and things like that. I know quite a bit about it and how it should work. Well, at least I know how to borrow it. <laughs> um, so if I have money in my IRA that I want to take advantage of and get a return on it, um, what are the steps that I would take to lend money from my IRA. Now, you, you mentioned something out about there being a cap on the con contribution. Is that the individual contribution? Or so if I get a return on an investment that I make, is there a cap on the amount that I can take as a return? There's not. Those are two different things. There's a cap on what you can put, personally put in, but there's no cap on the gains. Got it. Mm -hmm. And if it's a traditional IRA, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm one day in the future when you take your gains out you'll be 1099 like it was a part-time job and if it's a Roth and it's been open for five years there's the Roth five limit year five year rule and it's been open for five years you're never going to pay taxes on it beautiful, beautiful. so how it how it basically looks is you know you're going to create a note you know with the borrower Mm -hmm. um, I, some people will use a mortgage broker, which we all know a lot of mortgage brokers in our industry that they'll, they'll do that thing for a fee or an origination point, what have mm -hmm. you. And then after you do it a couple of times as an IRA owner, you say, wow, I've got the note now mm -hmm. I can edit it. It's in <laughs> word, you know, so I can hey, change hey, wait, the interest wait. rate. Don't give away too much stuff. I'm a broker. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I got you. I got you. But you're, you're exactly so, right, though. A lot of people do loan money because yeah. they don't want to fool with getting a house under contract and mm -hmm. the babysitting of the contractors and all that business. They want to return on their investment mm -hmm. with collateral and sometimes without collateral. It just depends right. on the note. Right. And um, some people charge a higher interest rate and they don't get anything but the payments plus the interest. Some people try a low, charge a lower interest rate and they may get 10%, 20%, 30% of the profit of the transaction. Like if wow. it's a fix and flip being yeah. funded, it's called equity participation. So you have all these different options when you're creating your note. It could just be plain Jane principal plus interest, or it could just be, you know, interest only and then pay off at the end mm -hmm. type of thing. It just depends on the person and the borrower. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, I have um, one, one of my mentors, uh, Mr. James McCoy. He says, is it true that when you turn 70, I have to take out a percentage of my 401k? It actually just changed this year to 72 and a half, and it's called your 
RMD, required minimum distribution. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it's a formula that usually equals to about three or 4% of all your retirement holdings. And yes, mm -hmm. you have to start taking it. The IRS wants their taxes before you die. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> at 72 and a half, it's time you start taking that money out of your retirement account. You know, if it's a Roth IRA, though, obviously there's no taxes and you don't have to take it out. But any of your pre-tax IRAs or 401ks, you do. Got it. Got it. OK. OK. Um, that's interesting um, that they make you take it out. So as you take it out at the age of 72, um, so it's taxed as it's coming out. Is that right? That's right. So let's say you had a hundred thousand dollar house in your IRA or your mm -hmm. 401k you know, you're going to need to take a distribution of about three or four thousand um, dollars. You know, so if you didn't have cash in your IRA, you would have to deed over to yourself, you know, three or four thousand dollars, you know, three or four percent of the house. And then you would pay taxes on that that dollar amount. Got it. Got it. OK, so again, for clarification. So if there was a if I had one hundred thousand dollars in my IRA and I had it all lend, you know, I can, can I lend it all out? You can lend it all out. It can be in cash. It can be in gold. It can be in a loan. It can be in a house. It can be whatever mm -hmm. it is. There's mm -hmm. going to be a determination of the value as of December 31st, mm -hmm. the fair market value. And uh, you're going to, the form for the formula for doing your required minimum distribution is going to, like I say, equal out to you add all up your retirement stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be about three or 4% of that number you're going to have to take Got out it. and Got put it in your pocket. Got it. Okay. Okay. Now you can give it to charity. There's, uh, you can give up to fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, I think, of it, and not pay any taxes. So there mm -hmm. are ways around it. And then uh, the CARES Act did, you know, change uh, doing your RMDs, you know, for last year and this year. Obviously, they, the stock market is, you know, took a 10, 20 percent hit. Mm -hmm. So you think, wow, that's nice of the IRS not making us do our required minimum distribution this year. Well, that's because your assets are worth less, so they're going to get less money. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so absolutely. don't think they're doing you any big favors. Right, right, right. And and you you know, you made another point. I guess I was kind of alluding to that earlier. Uh, you made another point where, you know, as a result of the stock market taking a dive, many people's 401ks went down. That's right. What, what's the level of protection someone who was affected by something like that, that they could take in, in, in a way to not lose any more value? Is there any protection in place for that? Well, that's kind of why people do self-direct. And like right now, people, you know, when you go out and you meet people, they, everyone's talking about, hey, how you've been affected? How's your job doing? And, it, you know, for me, it's been almost a blessing where people can't get out of the stock market fast enough to get into real right. estate and mortgages yeah. and other things that aren't going to go up and down willy nilly by whatever mm -hmm. you see on TV every day, right. mm -hmm. you know, so it's more, um, it protects you more from the world events, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, real estate, you know, has never been worth nothing. And if you look at back in 2008, nine and 10, when the real estate market crashed, mm -hmm. People will tell you, yeah, my rental house that my IRA owned was worth half as much, but that $800 a month, the tenant was paying my IRA tax-free was still $800 a month tax-free. <laughs> so it is a way to, you know, help, you know, bulletproof yourself. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. All right. Great stuff. Um, I thought we had another question. All right. So. You, you, and again, you mentioned that it's, it's best to self-direct, even the 401k, correct? Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you're self-employed, your salary deferral, which is, you know, let's say you're self-employed and you're paying yourself yeah. a salary, mm -hmm. your first $19,500 can be your salary deferral. So you could take the 19,000, you could pay yourself $19,500 and you could make that as a 401k contribution mm. and not pay taxes on $19,500. Wow. <laughs> Where you can only put in maybe 6,500 in an IRA. Right, right, right. So yeah. you can see, and then on top of that, your company that you own mm -hmm. can match 25% of what you want to put in all the way up to sometimes $60,000. So, wow. I mean, 
a lot of people don't do that because mm-hmm. they just do their salary deferral because they want to pay as little taxes as possible because right. to put in 60 grand means you are putting in 75% of the, the 240 or whatever you're making. So you're paying a lot of money in taxes. Absolutely. It just depends though. Some people are killing it. You know, we have a lot of doctors and attorneys and real estate people, matter of fact, mm-hmm. you know, they, they're killing it. So they need somewhere to put this money and putting it in a self-directed 401k plan and then turning around and doing, you know, real estate uh, ventures because the, the montage or whatever you want to call it has always been invest in what, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. so you're a realtor or a real estate investor, you know that you're going to want to use your retirement account for real estate. If you're a banker, most of those people, they do lending because that's mm-hmm. what they know. Doctors, they tend to invest in pharmaceutical companies, medical device companies, up and coming, you know, private stock companies type of thing, which is their expertise. Mm-hmm. So that's why you, I mean, if you're somebody who's never bought your first house yet, you would not want to use your retirement savings to invest in real estate unless you knew someone like yourself mm-hmm. or had a mentor that right. was going to help them move along. So, so what you're saying to the people who have retirement accounts, it's best to contact me to lend the money to me. That's so- right. <laughs> Somebody who's already shown they know how to do it and do it right. in their sleep, you know? So shameless plug, shameless plug. <laughs> I'll send you an invoice. Right. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's, I mean, you know, but you're right, though. No. Uh, and I had to learn about this. Like, I had to learn about this years ago. And there's still some things, I'm still, you know, of course, I'm still putting together because oftentimes my lenders have no clue of how this process works. And I have to walk them through it. And, you know, some things have changed. So I want to make sure I'm up to date on my explanation. Like, I got all kind of documentation that I send to them for them to review. Maybe I should have you review it to make sure it's up to date. Um, but, you know, there's things like that, that like the, you know, the note and all that. I have all that information that I provide to them. Now, for someone who was, I, I guess I'll ask it this way. If someone is seeking to invest with someone, is there a way that they can get those types of notes and documentations from their, 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 um, their custodian? No. Okay, right, right, right. Okay. We're not allowed to provide blank documents, notes, mm-hmm. operating agreements. You know, we're not allowed to provide legal advice, accounting or investment advice. We're basically the glorified record keeper. Got it. Okay. You know, we're not a fiduciary, you mm-hmm. know. Um, that's why a lot of times we, not a lot of times, all the time, even on my emails and the fine print is seek professional advice. Right. You know, you can go to legal zoom and download a lot of stuff and get yourself in trouble. There's nothing mm-hmm. that's a substitute for somebody who's already living, breathing, succeeding in that universe that you're trying to get into, mm-hmm. you know, whether it means taking on a partner or two to get started. So you get familiar or getting with a mortgage broker, you know, going in cold turkey like a lot of teachers and firemen and police officers they'll retire and they'll show up at your local real estate association meeting because they want to get into real estate and they haven't the first clue you know what they're doing you know that may be a perfect candidate for instead doing a mortgage loaning money instead Mm-hmm. Kind of getting a bird's eye view of the see what's going on, or you know, like say, getting with a professional mm-hmm. to guide them, hold their hand the first time or two. Got it. Got and it. then you also you start meeting people that you trust, mm-hmm. and you'll start loaning money to the same people over and over again because you see how successful they are with what they do with the money right. in real right. estate, and it makes you sleep a lot easier. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's the thing that, you know, conversations that I've had with people who actually different people, different investors that borrow from people who are, you know, lending money from the IRA, oftentimes a good percentage of those people have no clue of how it works. Um, You know, one of the gentlemen that I work with who is he's been lending money for, I want to say 20 years. um, He actually taught me some things about how I should be borrowing his money. Of course, he probably would. (laughs) Um, Now, the part the part that 
me and him had a little bit of a difference on, and maybe you can help me clear this up. Um, I, I know the answer, but you know, just for people who may, <laughs> um, is it necessary? Now I know for someone who's been lending for some time, they've gotten to the understanding of how they can lend money and how they can make more money on lending their money. Um, is it absolutely necessary for someone who's lending money from their IRA to charge points on the money as opposed to just a percentage of return, a return on their money? What I mean by points, and I guess I'll, I'll describe it. Origination sort of, points. Origination points. So, pe so people understand what I'm talking about, yeah. Well, I can tell you what I see and I have seen. I mean, most of the time you do see the IRA owner, the lender, mm -hmm. adding some sort of charges fees to cover their IRA costs, mm -hmm. whether that's an application fee or, you know, an origination fee, what have you, you know, that that's common, but it's solely up to the two parties, the lender mm -hmm. and the borrower, you know, yeah. so you can see some loans with no fees up front that have this incredible payout at the end, mm -hmm. you know, so the, the borrower can have more money in their hands to, fix the house up and sell it or whatever they're doing with mm -hmm. the money. And then on the other hand, you see these notes come in where there's two or three points for the mortgage broker and there's an application fee and there's a loan document fee. And it's just a straight up seven, eight, 10, 12% interest rate. And that's it type of thing. Right. So it, every note's different really. So <clears throat> I got into the point of brokering one of my lenders money. You know, and I charge two points for brokering and I, you know, sometimes I'll split it depending on who the person is, one or two points. But my lender began to insist that, I, that he had to charge me three points. So now I got to charge four or five points to the people that I'm lending to. I'm like, you don't have to do that. No, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, not like, it's, it's not like these loans are, mm. you know, uh, regulated by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac type of thing mm. or FHA. Um, I do notice that a lot of IRA lenders tend to stay away from loaning money to people that are using uh, the funds to purchase a primary residence type of situation right. where it's more of their loaning for commercial mm -hmm. investors. Yeah, because, you know, just to make sure people understand, you have to be licensed in many cases to loan to a primary person that gets a, a insurance back type of loan. Yeah, Dodd Frank, you know, on all the rules that go along with that can be cumbersome on people. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, and I haven't been in the that life for a few years, but I think there was a two or three loan minimum or maximum, and then Dodd Frank kicks in on your loans. But mm -hmm. I can just tell you, if you're someone who's loaned money to somebody who's purchased their primary residence and you have a problem with them paying you, it's not as easy as you think, you know, getting them out of there. Right. So, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, <clears throat> so a person that is, that is borrowing money from someone who has, well, I guess let me, let me answer, let me ask this way. What is the max amount of a, of, a, of a loan that a person can give to someone if there is a maximum amount out of their IRA? There's not. There's not. Okay. So they can have as much in there. So for example, if their IRA begins to make returns on the money and that money increases to $200,000, dollars $400,000, um, that's money that they have in retirement and they can loan as much as that as they want to get the return on it. Is that right? That's exactly right. And they can also, let's say they don't have enough money to make the investment that the borrower wants. Mm -hmm. They can partner their IRA with somebody else's IRA, yes. or they can partner their IRA with their mm -hmm. personal non-IRA money. When you start mm -hmm. to getting into partnering with disqualified people, there are some rules that you have to watch out for that can make mm -hmm. it tricky, but mm -hmm. we see it all the time where, you know, I may use my cash in my checking account to partner with my IRA to loan money to Glenn for his shopping center project or mm -hmm. what have you. Or you see somebody partner, their, their brother or their aunt will partner with their IRA to loan money or buy this house type of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. 
Is there is there a maximum amount? Because I've had that happen before. Um, but I want to make sure, you know, for, for the sake of the folks that are watching, is there a, or, or listening, is there a maximum amount um, of people? So, for example, you have 10 people who have $10,000 in an IRA and they want to make a loan of $100,000. Can they partner together to make that loan of $100,000? Yeah, I mean, that's basic crowdfunding 101. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. And there's no regulation on pooling those people together, is there? There's not. And then there's a lot of platforms online nationwide that facilitate it for you. And then mm -hmm. there's people like you that do it for much less. Yes. You know, it's it's kind of like a REIT, you know, exactly. real estate yeah. investment trust where everybody's mm -hmm. buying in type of thing. And mm -hmm. uh, that's very popular. Those have been around forever in the IRA universe. Got it. Got it. So can someone invest in a REIT with the IRA? Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, because that's, that's kind of the thing that, you know, some people have been looking at, you know, investing in REITs, like people have no idea what REITs are, in many cases. Um, and that's something that I've actually had conversations on helping people understand what they are. But most times people look at just taking money out of their checking account to be able to invest in them as opposed to using retirement funds to be able to mm -hmm. exercise those options. Okay. Yeah, I mean, basically, for the easy beginner somebody creates an llc mm -hmm. and all these iras and non-iras are going to buy shares in that llc mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. person who owns the manager of that llc is going to go take that money in that llc and go flip a house buy a shopping center and fix mm -hmm. it up an apartment complex and then everybody is going to get their stocks bought back mm -hmm. it's called a private placement it's kind of like a re those are very popular mm -hmm. where people pool their money together to get into bigger investments what are, what are the sec regulations on something like that though if there are any there's really not mm -hmm. you know there's really not the qualified investment and in, uh investor because they're mm -hmm. non-publicly traded assets got it got it okay that's the key Good, good, good. That's good. why you'll find most of your custodians like us don't really are not the platform for investing in stocks, mm -hmm. bonds, and mutual funds, publicly traded assets. That's Got one it. of the reasons we're not a broker dealer. We don't verify investor, you know, type of thing. Okay. So if, if we had, so if, for, for those of us that are investors, if we had some people that were interested in loaning money to us, will we have them come to you to help facilitate their, of course, they'd have to open an account with you. Um, would you help with facilitating that whole process and how it works? Well, yes and no. And this will sound weird. It'll sound like I don't want the business, but I tell people don't open an account and park a bunch of cash with us while it is FDIC insured. It's not making any money. Right. You would really want to go and have an investment in mind and then come to me and mm -hmm. open up your account and then transfer over just what you needed. Not everything, right. unless it is everything that to make what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's, called self-directed for a reason you have to direct the funds the client Absolutely. so we can't help them or suggest they do this or that or give them a list of investments they can make so they'd want to you know chicken for the egg thing they want to have an investment before they come to me so you said you wouldn't tell your people to call me to invest with me is that what you're saying <laughs> well they <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just <laughs> he, Glenn, Glenn knows that my CEO is probably watching this right now. <laughs> my phone's going off right now. Don't right. say it. <laughs> Don't answer that question. Don't answer that yeah. question. <laughs> no, That's good funny. stuff. Good stuff. No, but um, you know, it it is it is good to have someone like yourself to be able to educate people on how to direct those funds because oftentimes you have people like you said where money just parked and they don't know that they can get a return on that and you know that money that they have by just lending it out and not doing any heavy lifting at all. Yeah, it happens all the time. I've seen it for years. You know, people will move their old four hundred one k or their IRA and park giant chunks of change. And mm -hmm. for years, 
it's sitting there not making any money. So if you're not making any money, I mean, you hear the old verbiage, you're losing money if you're not making money. I mean, you really are. Right. I mean, even though the fees for, we charge are nominal fees, um, which we don't even really charge a custodian fee if it's a cash account, you're still not making any money where you could at least put it in a money market at your IRA at your local bank until you figure out a alternative investment to, right. we can help you with. It's it's the opportunity cost is basically what it is. That's right. It's right. The opportunity just yeah. having it parked there. Right uh, now, people are so scared. They're getting out of the market as fast as they can. They don't care if they're not making any money because they're not losing any money, yes. you know, because they've just gotten the beating for the last couple months. So it just depends. But generally speaking, I tell people to find your investment, then open your account. Makes sense. Makes sense. And I've got, I guess I kind of, I'm going to want to walk through and have you verify some of what I'm talking about, just to people giving them an idea of how the process of lending money, you know, there's like, like we talked about earlier, there's promissory notes, there's a mortgage, there's, you know, and all of that, that goes in place when lending, you know, and, and many cases, what people also didn't, didn't, don't understand is that if you're lending money to me, you don't have to give it directly to me. It can be sent to the closing where they can fund the deal right from closing and it can be sent directly from the IRA. Uh, is, it's is usually recorded. Yeah. It's usually a recorded note, mm -hmm. and that means there's collateral, which means yes. less risk. You know, yes. that's the best. Absolutely. You can ask for something like that. Mm -hmm. But we and the IRS allows for it. I mean, it sounds silly. I've said it for years, but you know, if your next door neighbor is not one of your linear family members, you could get an IOU on a napkin, and that's compliant with the IRS yes. to loan money. Yes. You know, so it can be an unsecured, weak piece of paper, or it can be a, like you said, an attorney closed uh, real estate uh, yeah. recorded right. note. Right. And I typically like to go that route because it, it gives the person that's lending money a bit more of a, a comfort level so that they know that it's insured by an asset, pretty that's much. Right. Um, so if, if something were to happen, you know, COVID-19 <laughs> yeah. and, you know, like a lot of things are being, you know, standing still right now, mm -hmm. you know, they know that if not, if any if worst case scenario, they would still be able to get the asset. Right. Uh, and most times, you know, we borrow at a lower percentage to secure an equity interest in the property so that if something were to go wrong, there's still, you know, a possibility of having some equity left over in the property. Plus less risk when you have collateral. Yes. So that normally does constitute a lower interest rate. Yes. Where you see these unsecured mm -hmm. notes, mm -hmm. you know, interest rate could be sky high, but the default rate on an unsecured note is a lot bigger than a collateralized note. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, you know, I, I get involved in a little bit of both. I do some unsecured stuff where the rates go up to 15, 16, 17% in many cases, you know, as opposed to collateralized, you can't, well, now there are some people that do collateralized loans that still charge 15%. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I'm like, why? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's for those people who don't have the education and knowledge enough to approach someone you know, like yourself to help them understand how they can lend money and or borrow money from somebody and pretty much set the interest rate themselves, you know, um, because in many cases, any interest rate that you offer someone that has money that is just sitting there is going to be a good upside for them. You know, mm -hmm. you know but they have to make it make sense though, you know. That's why you start seeing people loan money like someone like you that's doing these secured real estate closing transactions mm -hmm. where the IRA client's going to loan over and over again to someone like you. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hoping to have that problem that I, that I'll be overbeared with the amount yeah. of people that want to lend money to me. <laughs> no, but that's good. I mean, and just, just so folks understand that, you know, where, like you mentioned, market money, market uh, money, market accounts, um, and savings accounts. Those are getting what nowadays an, an interest one, one quarter, quarter one, of a percent. One percent. I think yeah. I got a thing from uh, was it uh, Capital One or Citibank? You know, mm -hmm. they're like a one and a half percent. Oh like wow! That. So yeah. a whole one and a half percent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'll go up to at least eight or nine percent. You know, depending on yeah. the, depending on you know the length of the loan. Um, so that's another question: Is there a cap on the length of a loan? So if I wanted to take out, of course, it's not you know a, a, 
and not a personal for a personal residence. But if I want to do a five year fixed rate loan with a, a private lender on an investment property, you know, would that be something that they could yeah, do? Yeah, I mean, we see people doing <laughs> short term <laughs> loans, you know, bailing out somebody's fix and flip that went wrong or they found mold in the basement or there was vandalism on the property and they just need a short small loan to get to the finish line that closing and then we see people buying hold you know and they're doing loans you know 20 years you know long term stuff you know yeah. so it really depends but there's no limit there's no minimum or maximum you just gave me an idea i had a client call me up um about two weeks ago three weeks ago um she's had properties for a couple years that she's been paying the note on and she's had issues with the contractors and things like that and she's in a you know on the on the west coast and she has property on here in atlanta and um she was trying to find an option to be able to you know finish the projects and things like that i didn't think of having a private lender help her out um you know or mm -hmm. even listen to some of the people that i know or even partnering with her on okay you gave me another idea I, I, you send me the invoice now she wouldn't be able to partner <laughs> with her own ira on a project or an asset that she currently owns you could only partner with your own retirement account on something new you're going to buy mm -hmm. so um, her her current stuff's off limits to her IRA, definitely. but not okay. other people's. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking. Like maybe, you know, someone else that, that would be interested in partnering with her on those deals could potentially lend her the money to finish the project. Yeah. That's, so. that's what it's for. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's why I, I, people that have smaller yeah. accounts, <laughs> they're always saying, well, you know, what can I do with $10,000? What can I do with $15,000? I'm like, have you been to real estate association meeting le lately? Mm -hmm. You'll find mm -hmm. at least half a dozen people that are in the middle of an emergency that'll mm -hmm. give you pretty much whatever you want for ten, fifteen thousand dollars so they can sell that house. Absolutely. You know? Or so, have you called Glenn? Have asked? you called Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> we have a question. Uh someone says, with the volatility of the market, do you think it's smart to save in to save in gold as well? the volatility of the market you think it's smart to i'm, I'm not sure if that's an ira question um, well it is i mean a lot of people are have gold in their iras and gold is up big right now okay you mm -hmm. know it's a commodity though um so i can't really give investment advice but it is a piece of a lot of people's puzzle that they move stuff around and gold is you know very high right now okay, okay. a lot of people when they see all this stuff you know, war and disease and the rule of thumb is, you know, gold is a good place to park your money when things are bad outside. And a lot of people are doing that right now. Good, good, good stuff. Um, you know, and other people, other people were having concerns about everything, thinking that we're going to be going to digital currency um, because of the whole pandemic situation. They're like, oh, they're forcing us to go to digital currency. Um, so, um, you know, some of the people who invest in Bitcoin and thing like that, things like that have, um, I think it's been on the rise a little. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be funny if it was somebody from the Bitcoin community that was promoting that. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Crazy talk. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, well, we know how that goes. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it depends on what channel you watch. You absolutely, know? absolutely. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, great job, guys. Continue to bless you. You're real good. You're real good with this information. It's very informative. Um, five, five stars. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, is there anything else that you think folks need to know about um, their IRAs and, and, the, and the advantages of, of being able to have them in place? I know I know a question that I'm sure my wife would want me, want me to ask. Um, and we, we, she already knows this, and we've talked about this, about opening an IRA, IRA account. Some people don't know this. Open an IRA account for a child. Um, what, what could you tell us about doing that? And is there an age limit? Um, or as long as they have a social security number and they get a paycheck? How does that work? Well, <laughs> if you go back to what we, I talked about in the beginning, the IRA, the individual retirement account, allows you to make annual contributions as long as you have payroll. Mm -hmm. You have income. Yes. So a lot of times you'll see 
you know, a two-year-old get 1099 from somebody's business mm -hmm. for marketing pictures. Absolutely. <laughs> so that they have the income to make a IRA contribution. Yes. So there is no age limit, but you do have to have income. The Social yes. Security alone is not the full piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, a lot of people will do that. You know, mm -hmm. they'll open up an IRA for their child. Mm -hmm. You know, teens, you know, if you have a teenager that's mowing lawns, you know, just have one of your neighbors 1099 him. Right. You know, so right. he can put some money into an IRA or a babysitter. You know, just ask them. It's, you know, it's really not any sweat off their back to, you know, 1099 them. It's that way they can start putting money in at a young age. And well, what can they do with a couple thousand dollars? They could buy a couple tax liens. Absolutely. Worst case scenario, they're going to make 20% on their money in Georgia. Best case scenario, they're going to wind up with a property in there before they even have a car that they can drive. Beautiful. You know, Beautiful. so you can get really creative with this with a very little amount of money. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. This is the other question I'm sure that people would want to know. What's the minimum amount someone should have to open an IRA account? Well, I mean, <clears throat> technically, there's no minimum to open an account. We have a 750 required minimum balance, okay. you know, which we lower for people that are starting from scratch. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. so it really depends on what investments opportunities do they have. Mm, okay. You know, if they really don't have anything on the horizon, you know, I'm I'm saying open up an account with the bare minimum, just enough. Like if you're gonna do real estate, so that your IRA could make a contract and send earnest money enough mm -hmm. to cover the earnest money. You know, right. that way, once you get the house under contract, you know how much money you need to bring over from your 401k or your old IRA, God. instead of just bringing it all over and you never do get a house under contract. Right. You know, which is, we see that all the time. Three, four yeah. months goes around. Right now, inventory is real low, but I watched a show last night where the CEO from Quicken Loans was on, and he said their pre-approval letter requests are up 400%. Wow. These are people that are out shopping, and they want a loan to be pre-approved so they can give it to a seller. And that tells wow. you a lot right there. Absolutely. People are starting to get back to business. And uh, he believed that the inventory was getting ready to get jacked up. Well, that's the thing, you know, because some people are using the, having the idea that the market is going to tank from all of this um, as, in terms of the real estate market, um, where I tend to agree that things will take a dip. So for those people who are getting pre-approved, it would give them an advantage to be prepared to take, you know, to buy some of these properties that are going to probably be, you know, have some extended days on market um, where people would then start reducing the prices of them. So it, it would be wise to people, for people to get in position to do that. Yeah, because of the same show I was watching last night, they were saying that forbearances, these are people that are asking to put money on the end of their mortgage, mm -hmm. you know, are one twentieth of what they thought they were going to be. Mm. So people are finding a way to pay their mortgage where right. everybody originally was expecting, and it still may happen. Don't get me wrong, but it's yeah. not looking like it is. You know, a giant flux of foreclosures coming through the market like ten mm. years ago, right. but so far not so much. Wow. You know? wow! So that's another good news for real estate investors. Wow. So that means that the economy is not doing as bad as we thought it was. And we can stay in the house for another six months then, right? Yeah. Like I said, it just depends on what channel you watch on TV. <laughs> you know, I just watched one channel the other day and I was talking to my wife. I like, man, honey, we're going to have to head for the hills here. This right. not looking good. <laughs> Sell everything. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, if you sell the houseboat, call me first. <laughs> yeah. No, I told him my, all my family, I said, come with me if you want to live. I got all the seafood and fresh water underneath. Right. Me. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Good stuff, man. Yeah, no, I saw that picture you sent the other day when we were talking about, I said, how are things are going for you? You said, oh, it's the worst. worst Life ever. is bad. I, I thought you might have taken it the wrong way when you didn't reply. I was telling my wife, I think I screwed up, honey. No, I did. I did reply. You didn't get my reply? I did. And I, I thought you were like, oh, that jerk rubbing it in my face. <laughs> 
No, listen. If the family doesn't want to come and stay with you, you know, me and my family, you can reserve us a spot. We'll 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 sit out on the deck for a little while. <laughs> we'll have a giant party anyway when this is all over for your uh, followers. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. <laughs> great stuff, great stuff. Um, someone says, uh, great tips for IRA use. Um, good stuff. So listen, this has been phenomenal. This has been phenomenal for me. So I definitely thank you for taking the time to come on and share with us. Um, and I know because of things that are going to transition in a little while, we'll probably have to definitely do this again oh, so yes. people can understand the benefits of this. Um, a couple things that I want to do for people that are watching. Um, I actually rolled out my uh, ebook, my Quick Start Real Estate ebook today, um, and it, it you can actually find it. Uh, we're supposed to have the link in here, but if you go to the Facebook group, Real Life Real Estate Investing Facebook group, you click on the picture, and you can get it for a dollar. I'm selling 20 years of knowledge packed into a Quick Start guide um, for one dollar. So. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a little crazy. I'm a little crazy. Um, but you can actually find it on our website also at real life, real estate investing, real life, real estate investing.com forward slash quick start guide. I believe it's there as well. Uh, and for those of you who purchased the book today for a dollar, I will also give you a free 30 minute consultation valued at $150, uh, 30 minute consultation valued at $150. If you purchase the quick start guide today for a dollar, at real life real estate investing.com or I think we should have the link that'll be coming up here in a minute. Um, if you purchase a link to purchase or if you can get go to the group, real life real estate investing group and click on the picture, it'll give you the link to purchase the book. You get it for a dollar and get a hundred fifty dollar consultation, 30, 30 minute consultation for absolutely free. That's my commercial for that. Um, but what I do want to do, Mike, is give you an opportunity to tell folks how they can get in contact with you and you maybe give them some of the steps that they should be walking through to get their IRA uh, open and, you know, how, how you can definitely help them out with that benefit. Sure, sure. So <clears throat> opening an IRA, you know, with us takes, you know, I joke and I say a fourth grader four or five minutes. You know, the <laughs> honest truth is it's an online application and it's, you know, a couple dozen questions, check the box here. It, it may take you five minutes max. Um, so opening account is very easy. If you have questions and you just want to talk about maybe scenarios or the rules, you can call me. My uh, direct number is 770-7800. 00548. And my email address is Mike Ventry at AmericanIRA.com. And Ventry is spelled V as in Victor, E N T R Y. Mike Ventry at AmericanIRA.com. And I'll spend as little or as much time as you need. Uh, in July, we're going to get fired up our every other Thursday lunch and learns in the office on different topics, loaning money, real estate, different uh, aspects of what your options are. And then hopefully this summer, I'll get back to my CE classes for you realtors out there that need the hours. It's a way better class than most of your, um, not to crack on home inspector CE classes, but it's nothing like that. It not only is great information, but it's something you can use as a tool in your toolbox for, you know, when you're showing properties, you know, you just ask that simple question to your buyers. Have you ever thought about using your IRA to be a real estate investor? And you'd be surprised how many more closings you have just by asking that one question. So wow. Mike Ventry at AmericanIRA.com and I can uh, help you with most anything self-directed. Okay. So Mike, are we, when are we getting the office back open? You know, we, we were excited. Well, you know, Sorry. the office is, you know, able to be open. I have all this new furniture and a bland, brand new 70, 80 inch flat screen 4k TV for the lunch and learns. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, I sat on the ground putting all that stuff together for two weeks and damn, <laughs> the coronavirus happened. So I'm told by the boss that he's going to allow it with <clears throat> social distancing. We're going to do, you know, every other 
seat empty and we're going to have the sanitation stations and uh, we're going to be taking people's temperature in the hallway before you come in. I just went and got a haircut the other day and they had this little thing they touched to my head and they took my temperature before I went in. We're going to be doing that too. So we're going to be taking all the steps to have a safe gathering uh, and we're hoping to get that rolling in, in July. So if you email me at Mike Venture at American IRA, um, Dot com. I will get you in the system, and if, if you're local to the Atlanta area, you'll start getting those uh, invitations to our events. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. All right. Yeah, and then we'll certainly we'll certainly uh, make sure we send out your information for the folks that that watch today, um, so they can definitely get in contact with you um, if they're interested in you know, opening an IRA or just being on the list to know what you know when the events are happening. Um, and actually, you know, for the folks that watching that are watching, we're partnered with American IRA where we host our events at their office because they're one of our biggest sponsors. And um, we host our events at their office. So if anyone that is interested in any class that we have going on, you will be meeting us at the American IRA office. Um, compliments of Mr. Mike Ventry himself. Uh, thank you so much for partnering with us and allowing us to use your facility to be able to share all this great information with people. The more uh, education, the better. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And uh, again, like I said, we're going to be doing this again. There's definitely going to be a part two to this because I believe that it's very important that information like this, that people may have no clue about, like some people don't even know what IRA stands for. Um, and that's okay. You know, if you don't know, you know, the, the part that's the problem, if you don't want to know, that's where I have an issue. <laughs> um, but I think people, should definitely be open to this type of information and being able to share this information is what our intention, of course, with Real Life Real Estate Investing is to do, to be sure people know. You know, keeping you in the know is what we like to do. So again, Mike, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks, um, go ahead and suffer again on your deck with your feet kicked up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate it. I know, right? <laughs> I, look, I hate it for you. <laughs> All right, listen, thanks again for joining us. Um, again, folks, this is the Real Life Real Estate Investing Show, where we talk about real life real estate situations, where we bring you real life real estate solutions. Thank you for joining us. I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks, Glenn. All right now.